Hi, I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos, and today we're going to talk about pancoast tumors. This is another one of our MedPix videos. We have no disclosures to report. Today's patient is a 38-year-old previously healthy woman. She presents with right upper extremity radicular signs and symptoms, including paresthesias and weakness. She has a long history of smoking. Here is her chest radiograph. Is this normal or abnormal? The radiograph is clearly abnormal, but the abnormality is in one of the common blind spots in looking at a chest radiograph. If we look at the lung apices, we can see that the right apex has a heterogeneous opacity as compared to the normal lucency seen on the left side. So we have an opaque right apex as compared to the normal lucent left apex. This patient has a pancoast tumor. This is also called a superior sulcus tumor or a posterior sulcus tumor. Approximately 95% of patients who have pancoast tumors have a non-small cell lung cancer. Approximately 52% are squamous cell carcinomas Adenocarcinomas and large cell carcinomas of a lung each represent a little more than 20%, and less than 5% of pancoast tumors are small cell carcinoma. The pancoast tumor is named for Henry Pancoast. He was from the University of Pennsylvania, and he was the first American professor of renkinology. Pancoast tumors arise from the lung parenchyma, but they usually do not produce pulmonary symptoms. Instead, they grow and invade the local structures. They may invade the bone and nerves, causing pain in the shoulder, scapula, and elbow, and weakness may occur in the same regions. When they extend to involve the sympathetic chain in the stellate ganglia in the neck, they can cause a Horner syndrome. The classic presentation of a Horner syndrome is ptosis, meiosis, and anhydrosis. Some of these patients will also have extension of the pancoast tumor into the vertebral column by passing through the neural foramina where they may press on the spinal cord and cause paraplegia involving the lower extremity, which can mislead the clinical examination. If we look at our patient again, I want to emphasize to examine carefully the opacity and lucency of the lungs on both sides. This patient clearly has an abnormality. We can see here the first ribs on both sides. We can see the lung apices, and we recognize clearly that the right lung apex is opaque, especially as compared to the patient's left side. Of course, using cross-sectional imaging, the abnormality is relatively easy to find. If we look at this lung CT scan, we can see the esophagus with a small amount of air inside. We can see the air in the trachea, and we can see a large posterior right apical mass, and this is causing the opacity that we see on the chest x-ray as compared to the lucency that we see on the patient's left side. The treatment for pancoast tumor includes staging with MR and CT to involve the entire body, including the brain and the liver. Many patients will undergo PET imaging. The patients can have lymph node biopsies involving the cervical lymph nodes as well as mediastinoscopy to sample mediastinal nodes. And treatment can involve radiation alone or a combination of preoperative radiation, surgery, and postoperative radiation. The five-year survival for patients with pancoast tumors is approximately 30%. Negative factors impacting prognosis include presentation with the Horner syndrome, involvement of mediastinal lymph nodes, involvement of supraclavicular lymph nodes, and involvement of the vertebral column and the spinal cord. So be careful to watch for this blind spot on a chest radiograph. Examine the entire radiograph carefully and especially note the lung apices and make sure that they have the same degree of penetration and the same degree of lucency or opacity. When one side is opaque, the patient may have a pancoast tumor. I'm Jim Smyrniotopoulos and I have approved this message. Thank you very much for your attention.